So welcome everybody to my little class on a game jamming, how to be a game dev in a weekend. Um, and uh, let's see, let me just make sure. All right, cool. So some of you may not know who I am, Paul who basically. Um, I actually started my career out in games QA and took part in my first global game jam back in 2010 uh, which feels like the stone age at this point in some ways but yeah I started back in 2010 game jamming and I uh, worked on a little game called deceptive platform that ended up uh, winning the NYU like venue for best game um, and basically it was a game built around being sadistic a little bit of making it really difficult for players to win because we change gravity controls physics fun stuff like that but yeah from there i ended up uh working with some people i met at that jam to make a mobile game called mutton math um and then eventually i started a youtube channel talking about game mechanics um did some ttrpg writing and now I'm part of the IGA uh, Level 3 cohort where uh, we pumped out a cute little game about Noki uh, in a Weekend Jam time period. So, with that said, what be a Game Jam, yo? <laughs> um, does anyone want to kind of give a guess or answer? Something you put on toast. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> I can't, uh, sorry, I can't see the stream <laughs> for some reason. Oh, it's true. Yeah, I guess. It might be on my end. Uh, I see it. I see it? I'll, okay, I'll, hang on. I'll be recording this let as me... well, too, and sharing it right after. Uh, let, so... me, let me try disconnecting, and I'll reconnect, see if that helps. Uh, yeah, sometimes Discord doesn't play nice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'll, be, I'll be right. Be right back. All right. Cool. Yeah. So, a jam. A jam is uh, it's a bunch of people riffing on an idea, building a game on it in a very, very short amount of time, um, and then no, throwing it together in sort of a competitive analysis. Usually, they announce a theme at the last minute to prevent people from pre-building or submitting previously generated content. And uh, sometimes there's a prize. Sometimes it's just accolades. But the the best part about it is you learn the rapid prototyping system and really get your name out there and network with some other cool people of a like mind who have an equal skill set in uh, cross genres. Yeah. yeah, that's that's basically the gist of it. It's um, Game Jam is a self-induced challenge where you basically are working with other people or solo to make a game within usually 48 hours. Some jams, or at least more recent jams, uh, because of... Uh, certain year that shall not be named uh have um opened it up more to be like a weekly um things and then it's always been a few that have also do some even longer ones like a month but really like the true essence of a game jam um it plays off of because it basically spun out of hackathons is that idea of like 48 hours to build something um while taking into account like more of a feel of like a jam session um, as you were mentioning, Corey, it's like the idea of people from different disciplines coming together to put together a game within like a short span of time, usually with some kind of theme challenge or like targeted goal put in place, be it like device or like some kind of arbitrary theme. They give like a word or a phrase or something like that. But let's see. All right, so. With that said, um, why game? Why jam? <laughs> um, for some people, it's a great chance to actually just make a game, um, because sometimes you may not have the time or understand, like, ability to sit down at day to day working on something bigger. You may just want to make something really quick to kind of make something. For others, they go in to learn new skills. Game jams are great opportunities for t testing out different tools, working with like software you never had before, or even trying things you haven't done before, which 
leads to try something different um, where um, say you're a programmer all day you program but you've been really wanting to get into pixel art and you started dabbling in it a game jam's a great chance to kind of practice test out and try out those skills I mean there's lots of other reasons like meeting awesome people having fun just trying out life as a game dev um, and pretty much any kind of other reason that you may have some kind of curiosity and you just want to give it a go or check it out. All right, so the question then becomes, who can jam? And if I did this slide, um, oh, uh, and I accidentally skipped ahead, but basically anyone, anyone can jam if you're just interested in wanting to work with other people and make something in a weekend or whatever like amount of time the jam lasts for and that means you may ask like but if you've never made games before is that fine and the answer is yeah it's, it's a okay honestly um making not making games you may have other skills like some underestimated but production and organization is a big key factor to sometimes being able to make something really polished and get something released in time like for the end of a game jam or maybe you do some like writing and um that isn't related to games that skills could be used too so really it doesn't matter if you made games before it just matters do you want to try so some people say that there's certain skills you need to have when going into a game jam like being able to program um being an artist, understand how to compose music, planning, games design, or some highly specialized thing. But the truth is, um, the only skill you really need is the desire to have a good time and learn. Um, game jams are really built to be loose and more open and opportunities for you to like learn things, to work with other people, um, have a good time. I mean, that's the most important part. It's you're making a game and the best way to make a fun game is to have fun while making a game honestly so goals um, and this is more of getting everyone to kind of think when you go into a game jam kind of figure out what your goals are what you want to kind of accomplish from it um, and there's different goals for different um, people with different um, skill levels um, some people may be going in to really sink their team into like a game engine they've never used before, like Godot. Say you want to learn Godot and your goal for the jam is just to have a good understanding of Godot. Uh, Go Not Godaddy. No one should use Godaddy. That play, that's, it's awful, honestly. But <laughs> but with Godot, it's like, say that's an engine you want to learn. But then others may go in um, wanting to actually like win a venue prize or win the game jam because some game jams have judging um they're going in with a very different mindset they usually have a preset team um because they're all want to kind of like hit the ground running and are very focused but if you're working with people who want to basically win win the jam or at least get like a top prize then like that could be a good goal to set for some people it's just like making just a polished finished game doesn't have to be perfect but you want something that's complete really it's important to kind of figure out what your goal is what you want to kind of get out of a game jam so this way it helps in terms of just figuring out what you are going to do and how you plan and how you handle things at the jam because it's very different for those who have more of like a learning goal compared to those who have like getting something really done and polished so that's more of like the introduction of like how the what it is kind of how to prepare mentally for a jam um now i'm gonna dive a bit deeper into what actually goes into a game jam like what is being done um and I mentioned before a lot of jams are 48 hours um part of that time crunch is purposely done uh because it's not really always about releasing like a perfect really heavily built game that has lots of different mechanics it's more about getting something just really focused around the theme and 
giving people an opportunity to just make something as quickly as possible. And that's where it kind of plays into some of that hackathon and like jam session kind of vibe. Um, but usually to begin a jam, they'll usually provide you a theme either at the jam or very, very shortly before the jam begins. Um, as Corey mentioned when he was talking about uh, his description of a game jam, usually a theme is there to work as kind of like a restriction for both good and bad. Uh, part of it is to restrict anyone from trying to kind of bring things they've done before into the jam because the themes, they, that's why they, some themes end up a little bit more obscure, but the theme's also there to kind of work as um, idea generation because um, usually the best and most refined ideas can come out of having some kinds of restrictions. Restrictions will help in terms of getting you to really focus on something. Um, and that's why um, usually the most fun that I've had at Game Champs is when like the theme really hits, but it doesn't allow for anything too open. Um, usually more open stuff creates more complications, honestly, because then you deal with potential issues like scope creep, um, things like that. And then, um, usually after the theme it's it's the main portion of the game jam which is making a game and let's see so making a game is really the biggest uh, portion of your game jam uh, and this is basically where you work with your team or yourself to put it all together um, and after most of the time because even though a game jam's a certain set time usually they give you a little less time to get your game submitted and after you make your game you'll usually submit it present it um, for judging if you want to for an award and then um, if there are awards available that's when you'll have judging and award ceremonies usually to show off the different games that were there and which ones like the judges felt like really showed off certain categories of like art sound gameplay polish things like that there's usually different categories depending on the venue and judges or how many judges they have smaller jams usually have less categories while bigger jams usually have a few more categories but let's see the most important thing though about game jamming and um, before we actually talk more about how to plan um, during your jam uh, one thing I want to talk about is being prepared um, it really, really, really does help to take some time before a jam, and if it is an in-person one, to really get prepared, or if you're working on something more physical, like a tabletop board game. Um, and some things I always recommend is computers, chargers, have your cables. If you're making a game that you know is going to use controllers, make sure you have controllers. Um, I also recommend having like a notebook for writing notes down. Um, if you're making a physical game, art supplies. Arts and crafts are um, always great to have because um, if you're making a, phys a physical board game where you want to make a quick paper prototype to see how fun your game is, you just pull out some markers, scissors, cut up bits of like paper and things like that and just throw them on like a table and kind of like play out your game. Um, USB drives uh, because sometimes uh, venues if you're doing a physical game jam have really bad internet and it's better to tr transfer data using a USB drive if you can't get onto github to access like repos and things like that um, I mean most important thing is a bag you should always have a nice big bag for putting all this stuff in and again there's always more stuff like dice um, poker chips, all sorts of things you could bring with you to help. Um, headsets, microphones, if you're doing something that's maybe audio controlled. Um, it's really kind of just, sometimes it helps to have more than to have less. <laughs> um, because you never really know what you're going to make. But if you realize, hey, I want to do something that involves like audio control, like voice control, having some kind of microphone, be it a headset or a simple like microphone you can put on a table. Um, it helps. So that's why I always recommend just spend a few days before a game jam, just kind of preparing, um, and not just the physical stuff, software. Make sure you have your software installed up to date because you never know 
how it's going to be when you get to a venue and all of a sudden Unity is trying to download a version and it takes about five hours just to get it on your machine. Um, it's not really that fun. So that's why I always recommend be prepared. I mean, it mostly worked for Scar until like Simba came back, but it, it's fine. Just be prepared. Uh, let's see. So, um, ah, the slide seems to be missing. Okay, so. Um, next topic I want to move on to, though, is um, planning. Uh, how, how do you actually handle planning for your game in a game jam? Um, and I think one of the most important things is to understand how much time you have in the jam. Um, if it's 48 hours, usually they start about like 5 p.m. local time for uh, most people um, and usually that night is after they give you the theme is the best time to really focus in and dive in on ideation what ideas do you have what really makes sense um, what is gonna be your core mechanic and then coming up with a loose plan on where to go from there and really with a game jam the shorter the less time you have the more important it is to keep things focused and avoid basically increasing your scope uh, because scope creep can usually become an issue during a game jam. One thing I always recommend is if you have an idea for like one or two mechanics, really focus on those and getting those to work as best as possible and make your jam and your game focused around that. Because you don't want to run into a situation where it's like, hey, we're going to make five levels. And it's like, you have two days to make five levels. Are they procedurally generated? How are you going to test it? Because testing is important to try and do during a jam. Though, I'll personally admit, I have been a culprit of, unfortunately, abandoning testing to get more uh, things uh, kind of fixed and pushed in the game. But... It really does matter to kind of be focused so you can have that extra time to add more polish to make your game the best it can be or make those mechanics really shine. And then that's when you shift into the next phase of the game jam, which is building. And usually this is like the full second day. And this is where you start putting together like your basics of your game, kind of getting things up and running, um, making sure it works with controls, getting your initial core mechanics in, even if it's with just uh, boxes that are colored differently, just as placeholders until like your modelers finishes whatever they're doing for like the player character and things like that. It's really going to be, this is the day where you want to really just focus on getting everything put together in at least a basic raw form even if it's as minimalistic as possible, because this way you can get other people to give you feedback on things as it goes, because you always want to fail fast at a game jam, which means if something isn't working, you want to find out as quickly as possible, so then you can just move on to like trying something different or tweaking something a different way. And that's why you never really want to spend too much time without actually verifying like how your game feels that's why it doesn't matter if the art or sound is in there yet as long as you can get the main gameplay kind of just working um but by the end of that day you want to at least start having things set up so everyone can start just putting their stuff in getting the art in getting the sound in getting make any changes to gameplay on certain levels if you're refining a level as the designer you want to be able to kind of have like almost your end vision of the level set and then like by the end of that day um, you should really have something that's playable that other people could um, really give more get more of a feel of what you're aiming for at that point um, and really have your core mechanic locked in in there and working usually the last day of a jam is when you you want to focus on polishing things really getting things like working really well you want your mechanic to feel good you want the art to all be in there um, if possible you want to at least get your basic ui 
happy even if it's just a simple start screen which is press button to start game and then like a game over screen it's like press button to restart game or go back to start screen you just want to make sure you have the very basics of your game together all the stuff that like really is going to make it shine and at this point any i new ideas are no longer valid here it's like you, this is the point where well honestly middle of saturday should be the point where simple new new ideas are stopped any new idea should be stopped at that point because you don't want to deal with the idea of like well if i add this in and then that this it's like and then you end up in a cycle of just trying to add more and more when you really want to make something super focused and polished and then yeah that's really one of the ways I like prefer planning out a jam, at least thinking about it from that point of view. Um, and it'll change a little bit more for, well, it'll change a lot more for solo devs, um, those who are doing game jam solo. Um, you may have more of a ebb and flow kind of thing because you're jumping between, hey, I got to get art, oh, but... I got to build out like this system. So it's like, you may work a little bit on the system. It's like, okay, this is good enough. Let me get some of the things that I want to put into it. And you end up working pretty much like, I at least end up working in a cycle when working solo of just, all right, I'm going to spend a little time on art. Okay, cool. This is good enough. Let's get this in. This looks good. All right, it's working. All right, now I'm going to shift over to game mechanics. All right, cool. That's working. Let me put together like and tweak some of the level setup right and it's like it's just a kind of iterative cycle of just jumping between the different roles but i'd personally not recommend solo jamming on your first jam and could talk more about that with uh yeah some of the jams okay so but yeah i definitely recommend not solo jamming but with planning out of the way let's talk about what are some of the different game jams you can actually um, take part in? So one is the global game jam. That's a big one that happens usually January, February of every year. Um, and that's where game developers around the world uh, basically spend a weekend working on games at the same time. Um, and there's a lot of local venues that uh, run things, but a lot of those have also have like online presence as well. Um, and I know there's more and more sites opening up around the world. Um, another biggie, which is actually next week, is Ludum Dare. Ludum Dare happens three times a year. Um, right now, they're going through what they call the gr slaughter round or grinder round, where they basically have like 2,000 plus themes, and everyone who wants to vote is just rapid firing yes or no in without even thinking about it because there's a lot of potential themes, and that's how they eventually get it down through several voting rounds to the theme of what you'll be working on, which should be in the next few days since it's next weekend. Um, and then many of you are here in IGA. Uh, as you know, there's challenge jams that they just started as well as some game jams they host, um, which is another great opportunity for just getting more experience game jamming. Um, I know the challenge jams are once a month or once every other month, something in that range. Um, but then I, uh, another big recommendation is just go to itch.io and they have a jam section that is just full of all sorts of jams that are going on all the time. It's a really cool and interesting interactive calendar that you can actually click on the bar for the jam. It'll take you to the site, tell you when like the event dates are for it, for when it begins, when it ends. Um, and it's a great way to find jams even when it's not like one of the bigger game jams going on. So, but another thing I wanna talk about is um, game jams aren't only just a weekend for some people, for some people and companies like um, Double Fine who hosts uh, internal game jam, um, those game jams lead to all sorts of games that a lot of us have played, like Goat Simulator, Costume Quest. Um, shoot, I didn't even know there was a Sesame Street game. So, Surgeon Simulator, Super Hot. A lot of these really popular games came out of game jams where 
like the idea just felt so good that people kept working on it kept refining the ideas and then decided hey let's make it a full game and like release it so people can play it uh -huh. and then at the end of the day what are the benefits of game jamming and honestly one big one is learn you're gonna learn a lot during a game jam you're gonna learn even if it's in a microcosm of actual game production you'll get to feel and see the game production life cycle to a small extent um you get to meet new people that's one of my favorite parts is all the people you get to meet hang out with have good laughs and grab grub with in um, in-person venues or just like do digital grub while you're all kind of chatting you all hanging out and stuff like that so that's always fun um for those who want to add more games to their por personal portfolios game jams are a great way to kind of build something quickly and get it in your personal portfolio um and then it's a great another thing you can do is test out ideas those if you have an idea for a style of game you may want to make a game jam is a great way to say hey i'm interested in maybe making like a deck building roguelite wonder what that would be like and you can test out those ideas at a game jam or at least parts of those ideas don't build out like a full try to build out a jrpg it's you really only have so much time and avoiding like those hiccups is uh, probably for the best honestly but yeah testing ideas that's that's the cool like another great benefit you get to test things you're thinking about it's like well how would that actually work or how would i implement that well, maybe join a game jam so you can give yourself a opportunity to try it and it's just a great creative outlet to just work together with other creative people and make something fun interesting and hopefully cool that gets super popular that we all get to play on steam or add to our steam libraries to eventually play so. I just want to call out that uh, the image on that slide. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Too much. This? Yeah. <laughs> Indie game dev feeling that. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh yeah, I gotta do that, that, oof. Or, oof. <laughs> but it's, a, it's about the fun and joy of learning. <laughs> but with that said, uh, Q&A. Um, anyone have any questions, want to chat about? Anything Game Jam related? Now is the floor yeah. is yours. <laughs> how uh, how many jams have you gone through? Like, uh, you know, what's your how do you usually doing yeah. them? Yeah. So I've most years I do at least a global game jam, but I average about maybe two three jams a year. Um, when it comes to um participation and organization, it depends on how I'm. I'm weird where it depends on how I feel. Some game jams, I go in with wanting to work with a team, make something like together with other people. Other game jams, I'm like, I want to be anti-social and just solo dev it. But um, I think what has helped m me a lot, especially more recently where, like this year at least, I've had pretty good success in game jams where the three I've taken part in, um, they've been, what I would say, finished in terms of like a game jam style game. And a lot of that is planning, just really think about, it's like, what do I want to be, like, that core essence of the game? And what's the most straightforward way to get to that goal? If that makes sense. It does. That makes actually a lot of sense, trying to be deliberate and intentional about um, what you're there to do with the given timeline, rather than trying to... Um, find something cool within the theme that you want to actually express what you're trying to get towards. What do you do to yeah. like select the jam that you're going to go into? If you've got some, is it based on your scheduling or is it something that you are always watching for on the horizon of yeah. like, Hey, maybe there's going to be a new one coming up. I don't know. Yeah. So, uh, the two I mentioned, global game jam and Ludum dare, because they usually have set dates way in advance. Um, those are ones that I usually try to make sure I, free up time around uh but more recently um like there's been a few jams that i'm looking at now i have to actually hit the calendar again because i don't know if i caught the github get off one but there's a few other jams that i like to kind of keep track of and 
it's more of I see a jam and I try to plan around the jam, um, almost like planning a vacation, but with a game jams. Um, only because for me it's a little harder with my work schedule to always be able to say, hey, I'm just gonna game jam this weekend. Yeah, in my house, when I, when I say I'm going to do a game jam, my wife's first two questions, how long is it? Like, what? I'm going to be crunching for like seven days. It's okay. I can sleep like next week. Exactly. So that's always fun uh, to explain to your friends and family. It's like, look, I'm going to be gone for 48 hours. It's like, why? Like, what happened? Do you need to talk? It's like, no, 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 it's fine. I'm, I'm doing this to myself. It's like, lie again <laughs> yeah yeah I do, this, I do this to myself that that's the mantra of the indie game jammer okay. love it that, great presentation man thank you yeah thanks uh, i have a question yeah go for it so how do you uh do you do a paper prototype sort of thing before you start your uh game jam or do you just go <laughs> do you just go right into the edge and sort of thing like how yeah. what would you recommend yeah so as part of my process i like to just after i hear the theme i just anything that starts coming to mind i just start writing um the ideas down um part of that's just to kind of see what's clicking what's not um even if it's absurd ideas like um one of them was No Place Like Home um, or something like that. And I decided I wanted to make a game about shooting furniture out of a gun. But um, to get there, it's really about like ideating, um, just getting everything out of your head while it's there. That's why even before they finish like theme presentations, I'll end up writing in a notebook, just getting everything down. And then after that, um, if I'm working with a team, we'll all kind of put our ideas out and kind of vote on which one sounds the most appealing but then i'd recommend usually like even if it's just with like erasers and or whatever you have on hand just to kind of visualize it um i'd recommend doing like some kind of paper prototype just to get a feel of how things look move how you visualize like the basics of your game that's why i always recommend bringing like uh, po like dice and token or poker chips and things like that because they're great to use for just imagining before you actually get started or lock in on anything oh, okay cool yeah hope well <laughs> any other questions So while people dig up other questions, I do have some questions that I was sent in advance. So uh, one question is um, advice for finding teammates uh, for a game jam. So and this is going to vary from game jam to game jam. I know some game jams like to um, have a space where they can help teams find people they need or help build a team out of people who came looking for a team but don't have a team at all um another recommendation i personally have is uh discord discord has become really great especially for online game jams to just find other people to work together with to build a game um especially those are more game dev related like iga or local ones like i know new york um igda the International Game Developers Associate, like the local chapter in New York has a Discord for connecting people in there. Um, I know there's one called ATX Game Makers for Austin, Texas, but basically Discord is a great place to um, basically team up with people. And I know that there's a lot of people who've been starting Discords just built around the idea of game jamming. So when it comes to finding teammates, I definitely recommend checking those out because Again, that's always, like, if you want to work with a team or if it's your first one, it could be a little intimidating um, trying to find a team. But, again, a lot of venues are very good at placing people. But Discord could also be a great place. Like, hey, is asking, hey, is anyone doing Ludum Dare next week? Oh, I am. It's like, hey, do you need a teammate? Or would you be willing, like, if I tag along to kind of learn from you or work together with you? 
And usually most people are pretty friendly. I mean, it's the internet, so I'm not going to say all people. But yeah. All right, let's see. Uh, tips on time management while jamming. I think we cover a lot of that, but it really does come down to just going with intention and just understanding what your intention or your plan is in advance. I mean, always be Batman. That's pretty much the one of the best models for anything you're going into. Always try to be Batman, planning ahead, getting everything ready um, much more in advance. Let's see. Ah, and let's... And then before I move on to this, anyone else? Oh, let me check chat because there are many ways to do this. Let's see. Uh, it's not the best, but I do, I do need to learn how to code a program before starting a game jam or working with a team to game jam. So the best part is, no, you don't You don't really need to know programming or coding. Um, there's all sorts of different roles that need to be filled in the game jam. Um, usually the most success, the teams that I've seen who have won most jams, like local jams at least, uh, a lot of them aren't as heavily programmer focused. They're more artist focused because making a lot of assets in a short time is difficult for just like one or two artists. So usually like art is a great skill to have. Um, if you want, you learning and learning how to work inside a game engine is always helpful like how does art interact with unity because that'll help the developers and designers a bit because it could be like hey i put everything in this folder so you'll now see it in like unity but um if i had to recommend tools to learn it'd be probably a game engine just to see how things work in terms of it like putting things into it um github because github is really great for being able to make sure everyone's work synced up properly. Um, I definitely would recommend learning GitHub because it's just super useful. And then, well, I said three, but I'm really, it's mainly two. <laughs> but um, if I had to recommend a third one, it'd probably be just, um, well, just getting familiar with using like Google Docs and stuff like that. I mean, there's different things you can do. Level design can be as simple as, hey, I built it on, I drew out this level and it's like, if you decide to learn unity, then you can like go in there and be like, Hey, here are all the elements that the been built. I'm just going to put them where they need to be to match up the design and make sure like check boxes to turn gravity off or <laughs> is done. So this way all your platforms don't fall into the void. <laughs> uh, modeling and animation. So the interesting part about um, if you want to learn 2D animation, um, I definitely recommend um, checking out some. There's lots of different YouTubers out there, but learning animation, 2D animation and learning how you can incorporate it into Unity because Unity has a lot of animation like tool sets built into it for 2D sprites and things like that. Um, let's see, but um modeling i mean it's so tough i there's so many different disciplines and skill sets that can help you um and especially in a game jam where you may not need to know how to model or create art um or program because if you know how to do game design or you have ideas for like narrative flow or you're doing things to kind of help ever keep everyone like on production task um that's the thing it's like there's no one hard skill you really need um if unfortunately as corey probably knows um if you're doing solo though uh you need to have a lot of skills that's the only exception it's like when you're working with a team you don't need a really a set skill like programming or art and if you want to just try art you can um especially if you know how to do things like with photoshop like creating like collages or taking pictures of stuff and then clipping it out and like kind of erase it and put it in Photoshop. One cool thing is like drawing something on a piece of paper, take a picture of it and then you just clip it out and make it into your main character. So let's see, make sure I didn't miss any 
other questions? <laughs> All right. Ah, uh, yes, scope creep. Ah, uh, yes. One of the most important skills is be a good team member. Especially as a leader. You yep. can't lead if you're not a good team member. Exactly. It's like, just be friendly and helpful to people because, honestly, you never know who will you'll run into again, especially if your goal for Game Jam is to make more games and eventually in, end up like full-time in the game industry. It's a very I've got small friends industry. at Ubisoft specifically oh, yeah. that came from Game Jam, so yeah. Yeah, it's like... Shoot, I've met so many different people who ended up different places. Like some of them ended up at Activision. Um, well, from game testing, I knew people. I met people from like Rockstar, but it's like it's a very small industry. That's why it really is. That is actually the most important skill. It's just be a good team member. <laughs> Basically, don't be a jerk, because <laughs> people will remember that. Um, also. Uh, one thing I want to chat about because uh, we did mention it just a little bit before uh, we started is assets. Um, and uh, you mentioned this, uh, asked about this, Corey. So assets and using them. Um, when it comes to like a game jam, if you're putting together like UI or if you're working solo, um, Sometimes you want to be able to make things a lot faster or even just get something inside engine to show see if it's working um, And I definitely would recommend checking out like the asset store for both unreal and unity. They have a lot of good free stuff um, Only thing you have to always check is um, If you plan on making your game more than just a jam game eventually you'll have to look into the legalese regarding each of the assets you use but there's a lot of like really good free and inexpensive assets that'll help you get something made really quickly like the game i made where you shoot furniture out of a gun um i basically hit up the asset store and look for any kind of piece of furniture i could find it's like all right you you're in the game you you made it all right next <laughs> it's like tv yeah sure why not we're gonna throw you in the game as well but um the other thing is uh there's also a few other places where you can get some good assets. Humble Bundle usually has pretty good assets for inexpensive prices. And you can take the slider and put it all the way up to as much as they allow you for donations, even though they still take their cut. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just a great way to kind of like stream down your workflows. It's like, hey, I, I don't have time to build out a bunch of like custom buttons and stuff. Let me see if there's something that like it's what I'm looking for on the assets store. So I definitely, it, having assets in advance can always help. It definitely can't hurt because it just helps streamline some of your other things. Let's see. Yeah. Nice, yeah. That's always awesome to build a game idea and core gameplay as like the prototype as part of the jam and then like after the jam that's when you can always go in later and if you do have some uh dicier assets that you can't legally use long term then you could just kind of be like all right well now i can spend actual time like modeling or hire someone who can do 3d modeling and get like different things in there let's see so let's see Yeah, it's true. Um, it's interesting because this is something I definitely want to get better at, and it's organizing all the things I've built after a jam into like almost categories of like what feels like it would be a good next thing to like work on. Um, because there's some ideas that I definitely would love to revisit, and then there's some that really just are more like a technical test because. Sometimes you won't finish a game jam game, and that's all right, honestly. Like, I've had those kinds of game jams, but I ended up coming out w with a nice debug tool that I could use if I ever want to make, like, a Legend of Zelda um, Link's Awakening style game, like the Switch um, remake of it, where it just has that same flow. I can test and build levels now that I have, like, the core of it built, but it becomes a nice, like, little tool that I could use for other things later on. 
And then I do have more questions, so let me see the list. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything else in chat. Let's see, that's that, that's that. All right, cool. Uh, okay, so how? All right, so this is an interesting one of how do people entering a game jam know that their idea hasn't already been done before? 90% of games is stealing, 10% is unique. <laughs> I mean, it, unfortunately, it's it, it's true because there's a lot of ideas out there, but if you really break down games and the mechanics, there's a lot of mechanics that overlap from different like games genres things like that it's really how you put it together and add your own uniqueness to it to make it your own so i don't think it really matters as much as if the idea has been done before as much as like how can you give it your own unique spin yeah no thanks for joining corey uh, and before that, actually, let me get that screenshot of everybody here. All right, cool. No, but thanks for joining, Corey. Hope you were able to get a lot of this. And I will be putting this online uh, right after. So, well, after I do some editing to it. But uh, let's see. And how to. All right, so moving on to. But yeah, so when it comes to like original ideas, it's. I wouldn't worry about it, especially during a game jam, because you, maybe you want to go in there with the I like saying, hey, I want to make a game that feels like this portion of, like, say, Pokemon. It's like, I want to just take the battle mechanic of Pokemon and make something that works like that, but is oddly unique and different from what they do. Like, maybe I want to make it, like, real-time action instead of turn-based, so... And you can just build a game based on just going from battle to battle to battle. It's still technically Pokemon, but you just add your own unique spin to it. Let's see. Let's see. So how can you kind of... Uh, let's see. Uh, so this is a good question. Uh, potential ideas for... Uh, game jams uh that iga or anyone could do um i mean i think personally i love the idea of jams built around building a game retro style where you force the same constraints that they had building like the original mario brothers or tetris games on people because constraints in a weird way get people to think really outside of the box of how they would approach problems and come up with some really cool solutions. Um, like, I know there's a few that do it based on Game Boy. Um, I'm taking part in one that you can only use certain colors based on CCAM, which is like those stripes, the color stripes um, that they used to use for like TV signal to kind of show like the signal was out or something like that. But I mean, there's all sorts of things. I mean, it'd be fun to see with Tabletop Simulator. It'd be cool to see more like tabletop games, um, kind of dig digital tabletop games, basically, where people design board games and work on getting into like board game simulator and then everyone can play and test things out like that. But I mean, when it comes to jams, there's so many different ideas. I mean. But I think those are two, like, my personal, like, anything board game related I've been real interested in, probably because I'm working on one right now, but also, like, anything that's related to, like, building with retro console constraints, that's always, like, something super interesting. Ooh, s restricted to a single visual asset, that's actually a good one, too. That'd actually be a fun jam to see. So maybe we'll compile all these ideas and send them over to IGA so they can, for any future jams, and then see if there's any, get a nice running list. Yeah, because there's so many, yeah, there's lots of interesting things you could do. Like if it's like a 2D sprite or something like that, you could actually like zoom in and make the sprite itself like the level or generate the level based on that. Oh man. 
that would be real interesting to see a jam where it's just a single asset. See, it, it, that's the thing about what makes game jams fun is the restrictions can lead to so many like fun and creative ideas. Uh, let's see. So let's see. Uh, this is actually a really interesting question uh, that uh, someone uh, mentioned, which is how can like a game jam? How can a game jam distribute uneven resources? Um, because this can happen where you end up at a jam site and there's like 10 artists and two programmers or 10 programmers and like two artists. Um, it definitely happens a lot for uh, the music and audio side of things. Uh, a lot of times you'll see musicians actually not being on a single team, but they'll work together with like a few teams um, and kind of just distribute them as best as they can um, in order for jam sites to deal with it that's a little tougher part of it is kind of knowing what kind of skill sets are joining the game jam um, and because of that it's like you don't always know what skill sets are going to be there um, some ways to think jam sites can help alleviate that is a lot of jam sites have people there to kind of help and assist others um, maybe have like having volunteers who can fill certain roles if it's needed to be or i mean just kind of requiring not requiring but asking people if they could like let others know what they're interested in doing at the jam because someone may be a programmer but they show up to a jam it's like i'm ready to do 2d art this time i just want to 2d art my life away this weekend and that's perfectly fine honestly but it's 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 tough that's one of the really tough things to figure out, especially when you don't know who's showing up to a game jam. So that's that's definitely a problem. I'd love to keep chatting with other people about over time to see if there can be solutions because I run into it myself where it's just like, hey, what are you? It's like, I'm a programmer. It's like, oh, another programmer. Okay, uh, <laughs> wait right there. And it's just like, okay. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so, uh, and I think that covers at least the list of questions I have, uh, oh, nice, yeah, thanks, Pierre the Handsome, for sharing Worst Game of the Year 2023 Jam, that could be fun, let's see, for short, make Worst Game in History so bad it deserves Worst Game of Year, man, that could be fun making worse game some ideas that i'd probably recommend is purposely putting like game crashing bugs but like after the game crash it like automatically restarts back to the beginning at some point <laughs> but yeah does anyone else have any questions any other cool game jam stuff you want to chat about share So with that, I think we've exhausted all the questions. So if anyone is interested in chatting further about game jams uh, or wants to check out my YouTube channel where I break down game mechanics uh, and where this video will end up living after this or follow me on Twitter where I tweet um, once a month, I think, roughly. Because, <laughs> uh, you know, well, besides the things going on with Twitter, it's like I've been I'm not good at Twitter, though I have to get better at it because I am working on projects now that I need to start pushing. But yeah, and if you have any other questions, yeah, just shoot them to me. Um, you could probably just shoot them to me on Twitter or here in the IGA Discord if you're here watching from IGA or um, on Discord. I'm also Paul Programs, so you can probably reach me out to me uh, reach out to me that way as well but no thanks everyone who showed up and good luck on your next game jams as ludum dare is literally just a stone's throw away <laughs>